Hi, my name is Chris Ryan. Welcome to the Forest of Arden. Today we're talking about the driver. We're talking about spin rates and what you can do to lower the spin on your driver, which is hopefully going to give you some more yardage from the tee. So welcome back to another Your Friday. This is where you can get involved and help me with the content for these videos. If you would like to have your say, you've got a topic, you've got a question, you've got a fault that you're struggling with, whatever it may be, let me know in the comments box down below. You can also get in touch with me via Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and hopefully we can do a video for you. Today, we are answering the question from Dusty Gordian. Uh, this was via YouTube, sorry, via Facebook, I apologize, who was talking all about the spin he was generating with the driver. As you can see there, he was basically saying that with the driver, he was getting in excess of 3,800 RPM. That's revolutions per minute. Now, the spin rate I, that is ideal for a golfer is very much depending on the speed that they swing. So there is no right or wrong spin rate. However, anything getting close to 4,000 RPM is certainly too high, and we're certainly going to be losing distance, and that's certainly what he alluded to in that video. Now, we are going to go through, in this video, a couple of things that are really influential in creating spin. But before we do that, we just need you to check two things. Firstly, you need to make sure that the driver you have is correct for you. If you have the wrong driver, that could be the wrong head style, the wrong shaft, the wrong loft, whatever it may be, you can have too much spin on the ball flight. You're probably not gonna have 4,000, but it could be a contributing factor. So make sure the driver is correct. The second thing I want you to do is just check where you're making contact. If you are making contact, very much towards the bottom of the golf club or very much towards the inside of the golf club. Those two locations on the club head can increase the spin and see that number shoot up towards the 4000s. So check those two things first. However, we're going to assume that those two are absolutely fine. You've got your driver that's custom fitted. You're hitting the middle every single time. I'm sure you are. We now need to look at impact and what creates spin. Now, there is a term that we use, um, which Trapman measures, which is called spin loft. So we're just going to talk through what that is, and that's going to really give you an indication of what, what factors are creating the spin that's on the golf ball. When you make contact with the ball, you will have an angle of attack. That is whether the golf club is traveling away from the ground or towards the ground. So for the purpose of this little exercise, we're going to say that your angle of attack is zero. So it's traveling level with the ground as you make contact with the golf ball. You will also have an impact, a loft on the golf club. Really important to understand that loft is not what is written on the bottom of the golf club. That is influencing it, but this is what we call dynamic loft. This is what we present to the ball. You can imagine that if I had my handle forwards, that would be lower loft. If I had the handle back, that would be higher loft. So we also have, with an angle of attack, we have a what we call a dynamic loft. That is the loft that's on the golf club. Now let's say, for this little demonstration, that the loft on my golf club is 10 degrees. So I have a golf club which is traveling level with the ground, and I have a loft which is 10 degrees. The difference between those two numbers, which is 10 degrees, is what's called my spin loft. So my spin loft in that little example would be 10 degrees. Now, if I was to make another golf swing where my golf club traveled downwards towards the ground by, let's say, 10 degrees, just using easy numbers, so my club's traveling downwards by 10, and when I hit the ball, my club's loft is 20. So my loft is pointing up by 20, and my attack angle is down by 10. The difference between those two is 30. So on those two examples, we had a spin loft of 10 and a spin loft of 30. Very, very simply, the higher the number, the higher spin you're going to get. So if you're hitting shots when your spin rate is up near the 4,000s, down at impact, your spin loft is more, most likely to be too high. And that's due to the attack angle and the dynamic loft and the relationship between the two. If we are to try and lower the spin, we need to reduce that angle. So, if you can imagine I have a goal swing where my attack angle is slightly upwards and I have lower dynamic loft. So let's say my attack angle is, let's say, two degrees up and I've got a dynamic loft of eight, my spin loft will be six. That's a very, very low number. That ball is going to have significantly lower spin than the other two examples. So, whilst this may seem a little bit complicated and obviously when you're standing out on the golf course or you're on the fifth tee and you're trying to hit a ball down the fairway, that little sort of demonstration, understanding spin loft doesn't help you. It's just a good way for you to get your head around what factors go towards making spin and then we can look at what we need to do to change that. Here's a very, very simple little exercise I want you to do, which is going to give you a good idea 
to change attack angle and dynamic loft. Take a starting position with the driver. And you're gonna do this just inside the ball and I'm gonna try and keep my body as still as I can, but I'm gonna place the golf club onto the ground just outside my trail foot. So you can see the golf club's on the ground there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pivot and my rotation to drag the club along the ground with the handle forwards. But as I approach the ball, I want that golf club to raise up off the ground, such as this. Okay, I'm gonna do that again for you. So club's outside the heel, drag it and raise it. Now notice how I'm trying to keep the handle forward to the club head at all times. I'm not trying to let that club go past my hands. So what this little exercise is doing for me is giving me an idea as to what my impact would feel like with an upward angle of attack, but the handle forward controlling the dynamic loft. That, those two elements are narrowing the angle and ultimately reducing the spin. What I would then get you to try and do is actually try and hit a couple of shots, and I'm talking really, really short distance here, maybe 20 or 30 yards, where we try and create the same feeling through the golf ball. So my club is going low to high, but I'm controlling the dynamic loft. So we're gonna try that now. 20, 30 yards, low to high, controlling the dynamic loft. Now, I'm not really gonna get any particular ball flight on that because it's very, very slow speed, but I'm starting to get my head around, I'm starting to get my body to sense what it's like to deliver the golf club with an impact which is gonna create some lower spin. Ultimately, you can scale that up and you can work that into your golfing. So, understanding what goes into impact and what creates spin is really, really important. Obviously, there's things we haven't talked about. We've we haven't talked about the golf ball that we use. We haven't talked about the conditions that are out on the golf course. There are multiple different factors. However, if you can make sure you're striking the middle of the golf club, you have got a golf club which is perfectly fitted for you, and we can start to change the impact conditions and the spin loft, we should be able to get that ball into the air with the right amount of spin. And that is definitely gonna help you hit the ball further. So hopefully that's answered a couple of your questions, giving you some ideas on what might be happening in your golf swing to give you that spin rate near 4,000. If we can get that under 3,000, I certainly think you will hit some longer drives and hopefully more fairways. Thanks for watching. As I said, it's your Friday. Get involved, post your comments, let me know what you would like a topic on, and hopefully I can do a video to help you. Also down there, there's a like button and there's a link to subscribe to my channel. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you again soon.